What determines failure or success? Is it hard work, intelligence, determination, teamwork, support, talent, environment, genetics, luck, destiny? All of these things contribute to success, but there's ultimately only one thing that determines it. What is this one thing? It's called system energy management. And here's how it works. First, everything is a system. A system is a series of interacting, interrelated or interdependent elements forming a complex whole. For example, you're a system. You have a body, which is a physical system comprised of other systems such as your immune system, circulatory system, or digestive system. And if you were to look closely at any one of your systems, you'd see that it too is comprised of other systems. And of course, your physical system is an element in a larger system. You have a mental system, an emotional system, you're part of a family system, community system, economic system, government system, ecological system, planetary system, and so on. The bottom line, everything is a system, and system energy management is what determines failure or success. Two laws of physics determine how energy is used within any system. They're called the first and second law of thermodynamics. Engineers use these laws to design just about everything, including buildings and bridges, microchips and spaceships. The first law of thermodynamics is called conservation. It says that at any given point in time, the potential energy available to a system is fixed. The second law of thermodynamics is called entropy. It says that every system falls apart over time. No matter how hard we try, there's no escaping the irresistible force of entropy. You, me, and everything in the universe is ultimately falling apart over time due to entropy. Now that you know the basics of these two laws, you can begin to use them to understand if any system in the universe, including you, your family, your company, and even your favorite NFL team, is going to fail or succeed. First. Define success however you want to. Make a lot of money, fall in love, be fit and healthy, raise a family, grow your business, or win the Super Bowl. It doesn't matter how you define it, just define it. Second, apply the success formula to your system. The success formula is based on the first and second law of thermodynamics. It states that success is a function of two things, integration over entropy. Let's first define integration. Integration is a measure of how well your capabilities are aligned with external opportunities in the environment. When there's good alignment, you're tightly integrated and you have a higher probability of being successful. For example, let's take a look at a successful company like Apple. There's opportunity in the marketplace for people to do mobile computing, connect with others, and have access to media and information all the time. There's a big need for this, and thus it's a big opportunity. Apple has developed capabilities in its vision, ability to execute, product design, integrated hardware and software, global supply chain management, marketing and branding, and so on. Because Apple's capabilities are aligned with the current market opportunity, and because there are few practical alternatives to what Apple does and how well it does it, Apple is incredibly successful right now. So that's integration. It's a measure of how well aligned your capabilities are with external opportunities. The bigger the opportunity and the more tightly integrated your capabilities, the greater the potential success. The most interesting part of this formula and the biggest determinant to your failure or success is actually below the line. It's entropy. Entropy in the formula indicates the amount of energy required to maintain the system and get work done. For example, Imagine you work in a company where it's really hard to make decisions and get work done. Perhaps there's a lot of infighting between sales and marketing, or distrust between management and staff. It costs a lot of energy to maintain the system, make decisions, and get the work done. So success is a function of these two things, integration over entropy. Now that you understand the basics, it starts to get really profound. We know from the first law of thermodynamics that at any given point in time, the potential amount of energy available to your system is fixed. We also know from the second law of thermodynamics that the force of entropy is constantly eating away at your system. Therefore, the available energy to your system first flows to manage its entropy needs, to maintain the system, to make decisions, and to get the work done. Only after those needs are met 
And if any energy is left over, will it be made available for integration? Let's take a look at some everyday examples. Here is a man in the hospital. This man is a system. He has a fixed amount of energy available to him. His energy use first flows below the line to maintain the system. Because he's sick, he needs a lot of energy to do this. He has to heal. If you went to visit this man in the hospital, the doctors would ask you to limit your visitation time. They intuitively recognize that he needs to conserve as much energy as possible to heal. He has very little energy left over to be engaged in conversation with you. This couple is a system. They have a fixed amount of energy. But because they're fighting, the system is costing both the man and the woman more energy in their physical, mental, and emotional systems. Therefore, both individuals will have less energy available to be at their best in the relationship and in their jobs until the entropy is resolved. This company is a system. It has a fixed amount of energy available to it. They have a great opportunity in the marketplace and they have the capabilities to exploit it. But the two partners can't stand each other. There's mistrust and a lack of respect. This impacts how sales, marketing, finance, and technology plan, communicate, and work together. This is an entropy problem. It costs too much energy to maintain the system against this onslaught and the company is never able to fully marshal its resources and capture the opportunity. The US government is a system. The government has capabilities to legislate, tax, and use force. There are opportunities in the country for the government to be of service, job programs, healthcare programs, defense programs, education programs, etc. However, the political climate within the system is also rife with entropy. There's lots of politicking, finger pointing, positioning for sound bites, right versus left. There doesn't seem to be a lot of thoughtful, considerate, long-term policy decisions. Unless there's a decrease in the entropy within the political system, or unless the entropy gets so severe that the that the system collapses on itself, you can expect more of the same. Sports is a great landscape to view the laws of thermodynamics in action. This particular player is named Randy Moss. He's famous for his world-class capabilities. He has the opportunity to apply those capabilities in the National Football League. Randy is also infamous for increasing entropy in the locker room. If you were a coach or a GM, how you would weigh your desire to have Randy on your team would be based on how you view the increase in team capability over the potential increase in team entropy. And be warned, if the entropy gets high enough, you're not going to be successful no matter how good the skills of the individual players on the team. So imagine that your system has 100 arbitrary points of energy and that 50 points are needed to maintain the system, make decisions, and get the work done. This would leave 50 points available to be successful in the outside world. In this case, be wary. Ignore entropy at your peril. Now imagine that you were able to decrease your internal energy needs by half. This is a 200% improvement in your top line performance. This is awesome. Key takeaways. Everything is a system. The one thing that ultimately determines failure or success is system energy management. The first and second law of thermodynamics determine how your system manages energy. Energy first flows below the line to manage its internal entropy needs. Only if energy is available can the system engage in external integration and attempt to be successful. The bottom line, if you want to be successful, don't fight the physics.